So I'm back with Mike Viscuso, CTO at Carbon Black. And uh, Mike, looking forward to continuing this conversation on SOPA in the context of Carbon Black. Hey, in the first conversation, you mentioned with respect to Carbon Black integrations that usually the first one is with a SIM. Makes perfect sense. More telemetry into the SIM that I've already invested in. I should ask you then, so I'm going to ask you now. How does the role of the SIM evolve in the context of the SOPA architecture? Well, I think that the reality is, is that um, once people got all the data into the SIM, they started to see all the possibilities. Right. <laughs> oh my goodness, I could answer so many questions now that I couldn't answer before. So the expectations of the SIM went way up. It has, in fact, dominated that central pane of glass, which is great. It's a checkbox in the, in the SIM's favor. For compliance. Uh, yeah, or, or even just the next-gen SOC. I think the next-gen SOC is actually operating uh, primarily out of the SIM. So the SIM is what drives the beginning of the processes. But then you start saying the role of the SIM has to expand. Uh, we're seeing a lot of acquisitions in the space mm -hmm. uh, with Splunk and, and QRadar, mm -hmm. um, but largely out of necessity because you see there's so much more to do. And... Um, you know, if, if the SIM wants to maintain that, you know, CEO role as being the, the platform, you know, I think, I think uh, it, it becomes a large part of the reference architecture in SOPA. If it's unable to sort of establish those standards on which people start building on top of them, um, I, I think it, it really gets diminished uh, potentially down to nothing. And so it's a critical part for SIM, in my opinion. Um, we're, you know, we're certainly here to support it. But you start to see other vendors uh, get a little um, upset with where SIM is stopping right now. Like you see yep. the UBA vendors, for one, uh, start to say, hey, we're going to have to replicate what SIM does in order to get our job done. It's got to evolve with the architecture. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned UBA. I, I absolutely want to come back to that, but I'd like to pull on the standards thread a little bit. Sure. Standards are hard. Every industry I've been in, they're just hard to really get adopted. There has to be a driving force, a catalyst to really make standards be broadly adopted, so they're therefore have a lot of value. You know, in the SIM space, of course, we've, we've seen Ceph and Leaf in Thread Intel. We have Sticks and Taxi. Yeah, um, both have gotten good adoption. Why is that, and how does that that play into a, a SOPA reference architecture? Well, I, you know, I, I think uh, one of the interesting things, specifically on Sticks and Taxi, is that maybe even as recently as two years ago, we were still talking about Sticks and Taxi. Is it going to take off? Is it not going to take off? Are people going to start adopting it or are they not? Yeah. And the reality is that the financial services sector was the first to basically say, you will adopt Sticks and Taxi or we won't consider you. It forced everyone uh, who wanted to participate uh, in financial services to adopt Sticks and Taxi. And we, you know, we went through a lot of bumps in the road as all of us implemented it all at the same time. Um, and found lots of bugs and things like that. But ultimately, it required a, a big, large organization to say, this is the standard and you will adopt it. Sure, absolutely. So let's go back to UBA. Um, so we, when we think about the insider threat, right, we've got the insider threat that is maybe a little easier to detect, sort of the, the stolen credential version where I'm the proxy for external bad actor. Mm -hmm. Then we've got the true insider that um, knows the lay of the land, right? They can sort of move around stealthy and they're, they're harder to detect. So now we're putting sensors on end users, which we're typically referring to as UBA, and we're looking for anomalous end user activity, typically to protect corporate data assets. How are you seeing the advent of you and UEBA in the context of a SOAP architecture? Specifically in Carbon Black, um, we partner with uh, UBA vendors. and. Most of the partnerships that we have with UBA vendors are to clarify which of these two it is. We look at a particular data set and they look at a particular data set and we tend to uh, uncover each other's issues every so often. So we'll uncover what we think is malicious activity that is a valid insider and they will detect what they think is insider activity that is in fact malicious. You can use UBA to identify malicious activity, you can identify uh, uh, insider activity using traditional carbon black products, the combination of the two really helps you uh, separate the two. So this is really enriching data that's then providing the security analyst more context so it's more actionable. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I think that's one of the biggest benefits when you get this reference architecture together yeah. that you start to answer a lot of different questions, right? You can get a lot of different information about that one event or that, or that sequence of events. and and. If you don't have the full SOPA, right, you can only go so far. Right. The who, the what, the where, the when, and maybe even the how. That's right. That's yeah, exactly absolutely. right. Great. Well, hey, as we, as, we, as we wrap this up, let's take a bit of a view into the future. 
by talking about one of the key narratives in the cybersecurity industry right now, which is around consolidation. There's a lot, a lot of discussion that um, organizations have point tool fatigue, and if we have less tools that are tightly integrated, and if there's truly an emergence of a cybersecurity enterprise class platform, we'll gain better operational efficiency. What are your perspectives on the need for consolidation, the emergence of platforms, the, and the role of standards for integrations as to whether or not this is the right way for us to be thinking about what, what comes next when we think about SOPA? Yeah, security is in fact a little different because we have an, a, an adversary on the other side literally trying to use their own human creativity to bypass whatever we've put in place. And so I don't want to get away from best of breed. Uh, that's one of the things that I think, you know, we, we tend to float back, back and forth between best of breed and then one platform. Yeah. The reality is, is that we have an advanced actor that has human creativity that will bypass pretty much anything we put in place. And so best of breed is really important. I think ultimately when you look at SOPA and you start to see its uh, advantages, you start to say if we do this right, we won't exactly uh, measure ourselves on you know, how, many, how many vendors do I have in here. You'll, you'll actually start to see more of you know, how many solutions, you know, how, many, how many problems am I solving, right? I mean, people aren't talking about consolidating the apps on their iPhone because the integration is easy. Uh, it, it's not, it's not uh, something that I, I, I stress about. Adding a new app to my phone is just something I do and it right. all just works. Sure. And so, you know, I think if we do SOPA right, the reality is, is that, um, you know, uh, Mark and John were talking about 135 different um, security tools. Mm. The reality is I could see us having 135,000 different security tools and not, not having any stress. If we do in fact get to the standards of SOPA um, and we agree on those standards, um, the, the cost and the uh, effort of integration will go so far down that you won't be, you, this won't be a stress, it won't even be a conversation about how many security tools you have because the addition of another one is, is, is not a big deal. Right, so we establish a reference architecture that allows us to integrate orchestration and, and analytics tools based on standards, standard message bus, APIs, interfaces, then we can more readily consume innovative technologies that give us more efficacy, but also is operationally efficient at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah, that's where we want to get to. That, that is where we want to get to. Absolutely. Mike, been a pleasure. Really enjoyed the discussion. Looking forward to working with you, Carbon Black, and your partners on further defining SOPA for the market. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity, Doug. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody.